Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Jesse Laval, and today we're going to be setting up dual back button autofocus. Now, I already put one video out showing you how to set up dual back button autofocus, but the Canon R6 Mark II has been a little different in the way that it utilizes its autofocus system. So I've been relentlessly kind of tweaking my custom settings, trying to figure out how I wanted to get this set up, and I think I finally landed in a place where I feel like I have really good control over the entire autofocus system. So let's jump right into the menus, show you how I set this up, and then I'm gonna give you a little demonstration of how to use the autofocus system. So the first thing we wanna do is go to the autofocus tab and we wanna to go to page one. We wanna make sure that we have autofocus operation set to servo. We wanna have the autofocus area set to spot. Now this is actually a preference and one of the cool things about this autofocus system is we now have flexible zone autofocus where you can actually track subjects in these zones. So this is going to be situational and preference, but the way that we're going to set this up, the AF on button will trigger whatever your main type of focus system that you have set here. And you'll change that situationally. But for most instances for myself, I usually use spot autofocus. So I'm gonna leave it on there for now. You wanna make sure you go to whole area, tracking, servo autofocus, and turn this off. Now that kind of seems counterintuitive, but because we're going to specifically map that type of software to a certain button, we wanna make sure that that's off so that it doesn't interfere with the other type of autofocus setup that we have on other buttons. So we wanna make sure we have that set to off. We're gonna go down, subject to detect. We're gonna set that to none for now, but again, we're going to have a specific button that's going to control that. So you don't have to worry about that, but we're gonna set it to none for now. Eye detection, I leave on auto and switching track subjects, I just leave it on default, but you can change that again situationally. When it comes to the case settings, I've been finding auto to work so well that I haven't even messed with it. So I'm just leaving that on auto, and that's really all we have to do for our autofocus settings, guys. So what we wanna do after that is we wanna scroll over to the camera tab, and we wanna to go to page three, where we find customize buttons. And this is where we're gonna go in and we're gonna make a bunch of changes. Now, the first thing that we always do is go to the shutter button here, and we're going to make sure it's not set to metering and autofocus. We wanna set it to only metering start. And that'll mean that the shutter button is no longer controlling the actual focusing mechanism. So we're actually going into back button autofocus this way. We wanna make sure that we set that front button to metering start only. So once you've done that, I go down, I'm gonna set my movie shooting button to trigger my raw burst mode. I'm gonna go to my multi-function button and I'm gonna make that trigger my direct select of subject to detect. And that's different than the original dual back button autofocus that I had originally. Because this autofocus system is so different, I'm actually making changes to the way I've used all my other mirrorless R bodies. So going down, we have AF on, which is set to default. Like I said, this is going to trigger what I have set to spot autofocus right now, but again, situationally, you'll change what the main autofocus setup actually is. Going down to the star button, we're going to set this to AF on detected subject. Okay, we're gonna go down, we're gonna go to the autofocus point button, and we're going to set this to start slash stop whole area autofocus tracking. We're gonna leave the depth of field preview button alone. I do customize my set button so that it set autofocus point to center because I like to be able to move my autofocus points with my joystick and then just tap that set button real quick, bring it right back to the center. So I like to do that. And then after that, we're just gonna leave that alone. Now, if we go down further, I do have some customizations that I've made to my movie settings. So the multi-function button I now have set to function with my zebra settings. So it'll actually trigger my zebra settings to go on and off if I want. I leave the AF on to default. I set the star button to trigger eye detection. I set the autofocus point button to trigger subject detect autofocus. Depth of field left alone. Again, I've set the set button to set autofocus point to center. Joystick is default and everything else is default. Now, once you've made these changes, you have my actual autofocus setting set up. You're set up for this modified dual back button autofocus. And what I would then do is once you have all your settings set up correctly, you wanna go over here to the wrench tab and we wanna to go to custom shooting mode. And I would encourage you to save these settings into one of your C settings. That way you can flip right back to this type of a setup 
and then you can reset your manual mode back to the default mode and then you can actually flip between these custom settings and you're more of a default type of front shutter button setup if you want to very quickly. The one thing that you do want to be aware of is when you save something into C mode, you want to make sure that you have everything set the way that you want it when you flip to that. And I mean everything, like your shutter speed, your white balance, it's going to save every single setting in your camera. So make sure you've got it set up to a base setting that you're happy with going to when you first flip that dial right over to your C1 or 2 or 3 or whatever you saved it to. Okay, so now that we went over all of the custom settings, I want to give you an actual demonstration of how I utilize these settings because these really work very well to really take control over the autofocus system of the R6 Mark II. All right, guys, so I just want to give you a quick rundown of how I use this autofocus system. So we've got three buttons on the back of the camera. We've got the AF on button, the star button, and then the autofocus point button with the little box above it. And these are gonna be the three main buttons that you'll use to trigger your autofocus system now. So what we can do here, and remember that we've got the multi-function button that now triggers what type of subject we want to detect. So we want to set it to none if I want my spot autofocus to work like a traditional autofocus where it's only going to detect that one little spot. Because with this system, you'll notice if we use that multi-function button and I switch it over to say auto, now you'll notice that when I hover over a subject, it does actually track. And if I use that to trigger, it will track. But then if I leave the subject, the autofocus will leave that subject as well. So you do have spa autofocus, but it has some tracking there. But again, the multifunction button can be triggered to go to none, where it will work like the traditional spa autofocus. We also have the star button. The star button is going to trigger and just auto detect whatever subject and allow you to then hold that button down and you can just track your subject through the entire frame. And we now have a third option here, which is pretty cool because I can use the spot here to go over any subject I want, and then I just simply tap that autofocus point button. And now it's going to track a subject without me holding down a button, and that will allow me to really just pan through or move around the subject and compose it however I want. Now, like I said, the multi-function button, so again, I'll just tap that autofocus point selection there, and if I hit my multi-function button, I can choose what type of subject I want. So let's go to animals, and now you'll see that it's starting to trigger on sushi here. And again, I can just use my star button to track her. Hit the multi-function button, switch it over to people, and then we're going to trigger on Nikki here with my star button. Again, having three different options now, I can actually use my single point autofocus, which is going to have a little bit of tracking, if I didn't want to have that, then I would just set my subject tracking to none, and now I've got traditional single point autofocus. Also the ability to trigger with my star button, which will just automatically detect a subject, and then I can hold my button down, or being able to use my autofocus box here to really hover over any subject and tap that autofocus point, and it'll just assess that subject and then track that subject, hit it again to turn it off, Again, pick a different subject, tap it, and it's going to then track that. So pretty cool that you're able to use that little box to kind of hover over subjects and then have it detect and track those through the frame. Now, another thing that you can do that's been really cool with this system is we can go into the queue and we can hit autofocus and we can change it over to this flexible zone autofocus. And now, again, using that multifunction button, we can tell what subject we would want to detect and it will only detect subjects within that box using the autofocus button to trigger that, which is a really cool addition to the autofocus system here. So pretty cool. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to kind of go over that. There is one more thing. If you hit the recording button, I have mapped the raw burst mode, so you can enable that and go into your raw burst pre-shooting mode if you want to very, very easily, and then you can just flip right back out of it very, very quickly. Anyway, I hope that this video helped you out a little bit, and if it did, go below, subscribe, click the notification bell, and I'll see you guys on my next video.